Now that we're done with the conversation about Sephiroth being a Karen because he wanted to speak to the to the manager of a flower shop. Let's go ahead and talk about video games again, because it's totally not off topic. Now, I've covered the, the, the question before from certain apologists of should Christians play video games, but I find this topic really fascinating every single time it's discussed, especially since the guy who's discussing it this time is a guy named Todd Fryle. At least I believe that's how to pronounce it. I could be entirely wrong. I've covered him before on the channel, earlier. But let's go ahead and cover him again. He's going to ask the question, should Christian men play video games? Should an adult play video games? Why? Well, maybe if we unspeed you up and turn on captions so that we can have maximum our understanding. Is that an important question? Because a lot of people spend a lot of time playing video games, and we need to ask ourselves the question as a set apart people, is that the best use of my time? So I already don't like the framing of this because it's from the perspective of people who are set apart. This is a thing that, that has bothered me ever since becoming an atheist. This idea that Christians are set apart from the West of the world or set apart from any other religion, it feels very much like it defaults into otherizing other people, otherizing other ideologies away from yourself. It creates an in-group and an out-group so that instead of asking, should we play video games at all? It's, should we, as the set-apart group that has different rules that we have to play by, play video games? And I think that setting a group of humans apart from everybody else where they've got special rules and, I mean, hell, they've even got a special place they're going to go when they die. I find it to be... It's not the worst thing in the world on its own, but it is certainly a first step that can lead to other behaviors that do things like breed cults. And I'm not a big fan of that, personally. But let's continue. Is a mature adult supposed to be playing mm -hmm. something like that that could be considered a child's activity. I hate this point. I have always hated this point. The idea that there are things that are meant for children, like in a, in a deontological sense, almost. Something is meant for children and, and should not be, not cannot be enjoyed by adult, should not be enjoyed by an adult. If you enjoy playing with toys, Nothing wrong with that. If you enjoy doing like what I do, I like modifying Nerf guns. I like taking them apart, stripping the springs out, and trying to figure out if I can get the thing to pierce drywall. Like, that's a fun activity to me. I like doing that. It's, it's like being a mini mechanical engineer. Technically, I'm playing with children's toys, though, at the end of the day. Ignoring the fact that there are video games that are meant for adults... Specifically, if we ignore that part of the conversation, this idea that when you grow up, you're suddenly supposed to discard uh, certain things like video games. I, I just I just don't like that. And, you know, it doesn't help that I've handled people like call for an uprising that most of their arguments devolve into some form of ha ha, you're an adult. You're playing video games. Look at you. I just I just don't like that method. I find it to be really reductive and it's never able to be based on anything except our own societal expectations, which are really, really uh, wriggly at best. Is it dignified? Does it have control over me? The stuff is here to serve me. I'm not here to get addicted to stuff. So it is a question that demands a Christian filter and perspective. Actually, no. If we're talking about addiction, then it's not a Christian filter you need to be concerned with. You need to be dealing with this on a psychological level. Addiction is a very real thing. It's a very big problem. And you can become addicted to practically anything. And it needs to be resolved when it happens. If you're addicted to a video game, I've been addicted to, say, WoW or League of Legends before, where I was unable to function properly i would devote so much time to those activities instead of doing you know my work instead of doing my job instead of spending time with my family 
it's a real problem, but it's not a problem to be solved by a Christian filter. It's a problem to be solved by psychology. Whilst I thought we were making pretty good time in answering those questions during the break, it was brought up that the older generation, the, the one that preceded older folks, might have said about television, that is not a good use of time. That is not something where you should be giving up so much of your discretionary time to get amused and entertained. That's true. I, I think that's probably a fair observation. In fact, the generation before them, they might have said that about radio. The generation before them might have said something about the telephone or the telegraph or whatever the recent inter invention is. I understand that, but that doesn't mean we can just dismiss it and go, well, the older generation, they would have said that about TV, and wait a second, is it possible they were correct? Well, so here's the thing. Whenever we bring up the framing about television, books, movies, other media, it's not so much to say we are correct because you could say this about everything. Because the argument usually goes, you've got an adult who is watching TV and they spend four to five hours a day watching it and you spend the same amount of time playing video games as a kid, at least I did, and then you'd be told by the adult that you need to be spending that time doing something else, regardless of the fact that the adult was spending the exact same amount of time consuming the exact same amount of media as you were. It's meant to show that these things are on equal playing field. There is no difference as far as media is concerned from a book to a movie to a video game to a TV show. They are all different media that have different strengths, different weaknesses, and they are all excellent uses of your time when used sparingly or when used healthily. There are people that get addicted to escaping into worlds and novels and don't deal with the issues they have in real life. There are people that get addicted to binging on television and people get, get addicted to MMOs or other video games. It's to point out that the argument works for everything. And typically the people who are saying that you shouldn't be spending all this time playing video games are spending all that time doing other media consumption where they're engaging in the exact same activity. And then you get people who are Christians who will argue that, hey, you shouldn't be watching so much TV or you shouldn't be playing so many video games. I'm willing to accept the premise that maybe the older generation is right when they say that. As long as you're willing to accept the premise that the Bible is a piece of media. Because if you're willing to accept the premise that the Bible is a piece of media, then we have to move forward from this conversation accepting the fact that one can consume so much of the Bible repeatedly that that is also considered unhealthy. That's my point here. I'm willing, ready and willing, to accept Todd's assessment of the situation that maybe the older generation's right about needing to engage in healthy media consumption, needing to engage... Uh, in, in making sure we don't get addicted to things, needing to engage that we don't jump down the realm of escapism, ignore reality. I'm willing to accept all that if he's willing to accept that his Bible is a piece of media and it has all of the exact same shortcomings and downfalls as any other piece of media. Definitionally, it does. He might argue that that's not the case. Maybe that's a conversation to have at a later date. Instead of just dismissing it and brushing it underneath the carpet of, oh, just old folks, we... Well, yeah, you can't dismiss it just because of that. Because actually, dismissing it because of that, even though I gave a framework earlier, is technically too quo quay. It's what about -ism. It's, you know, what about you? I should ask the question, are these things good things? And if they are, in and of themselves, neutral or even possibly good for us, do I have control over them? That's really the issue. And so an older generation might have just tisked, tisked a recent invention and said, oh, that's not good for us. Maybe the response of the older generation should have been, okay, that's different. That could be a good thing. It could benefit us. Human ingenuity creating, God creates, we create. Hmm, we are subduing the planet with that invention. The question now is, how can I utilize it and not have it have mastery over 
me. Okay. But again, that's not a Christian perspective thing. The only thing in there that was part of Christian perspective was the need to dominate the planet, which is another issue that I, I don't I don't like the framing of of subduing the planet because there are so many people, especially in the Christian right, who will use the Bible's framing of dominating the planet as an excuse to ignore things like climate change, ignore damage that we are doing to sections of our planet that might never be able to recover after we've damaged them past a certain point that are like there are animal species that we can drive to extinction. But I mean, hell, if we're subduing the planet, we're doing God's work. So why is it a problem? I, I do not like that framing for that alone. Aside from that, though, everything else you gave is just standard psychological perspective. None of that's Christian perspective. The idea that whenever you engage in something that you need to make sure that it's not controlling you, you're controlling it. You're using it as a a healthy uh, part of your day instead of a part of your day that is, well, for lack of a better word, unhealthy. That's pretty basic. So we'll see what else he has to say about it there. But I've given my issues thus far. That is at least one question we should ask about video games. Let's just for a moment say that video games are totally neutral. Okay. The entire category totally neutral. Then I would say if you have mastery over them, if your family isn't complaining, if you aren't just needing to get to it, you just shake and tremble until you can get back to that game. Yeah, that's withdrawal. If it is a, an amount of time that is reasonable and it is on the priority list underneath service to your family, service in the local church. Then oh, okay, no, no. Now you are giving Christian perspective and now I have issue. So why must you engage in service to your local church? Because depending on the church, that church's version of asking for service could be asking for money that you may not be able to give. That church's version of asking for service could be doing things like, you know, building a temple hall. If we're talking about the Jehovah's Witnesses or Mormons, where they're having to build all of the stuff, you know, free and pro bono for elders within their society. Technically, that's service to your church. And I would consider those things to be unhealthy if you were putting them above doing things for yourself, doing things that are healthy for you. I do not like that framing. When you put service to your family here as well, we have to assume that the family is not a toxic element in the person's life. If your family is an incredibly toxic part of your life, well, but if your family is an incredibly toxic part of your life, your priority list does not need to be family, then video games here. The video games may be the healthier thing on your priority list because your family might just be abusing you, might be using you. I don't like this idea that service to church or family is axiomatic when it's always beholden to context. Then I would say play on. But have you researched video games? I took some time to do that because I'm not a gamer myself, and it seems to me that video games can be broken down into two major categories. This is my observation based on Googling. So you don't play video games, and based off of your observation from Googling, you're gonna give us your pers you're gonna give us a very well-informed per perspective, I'm sure. I Googled the top 10 video games for 2017, 16, 15, just to take a look and see what, what's the big seller? What are people doing? Okay, so what video games did you find? I'm, I'm curious. And I noticed about 20, maybe 30 <laughs> percent. Oh, oh my gosh, Growler. Oh boy. Take. So why don't we say 25 percent? 25 percent of the games are games. Real informed take here. 25 percent of video games are in fact games. I, I don't know what else you would call them, Todd. But, you know. Numbers, games, Sudoku. Su what are those things called? Sudoku. Holy shit. So what he just said, Sudoku. Su su the things that you play with the deal, you know, that, that like in, when you're waiting for the dentist to show up, those are games. They no, those are puzzle games. 
The, the category you're looking for is puzzle games. It can be good for your brain. It can be something that just fills time, like playing chess. It can be something that allows you to interact with your family. I personally would say, okay. Okay, so wait. You've got a category of games like this where you might interact with your family. So this category of games necessarily includes puzzle games, uh, stuff like Mario Party and Mario Kart party games, uh, shooters like Halo, where you've got couch co-op, or you might have four-player multiplayer on the same console. You know, rest in peace to that mode. Um, you've necessarily got stuff like old school N64 Goldeneye. Uh, you necessarily have in this area also Super Smash Brothers. So you've got fighting games, which means you've also got Mortal Kombat. So wait, you've basically got puzzle games and multiplayer games in this giant holy shit large category and oh god i'm not even considering the fact that this could include mmos mobas some of the places that can have some of the most toxic cesspool environments in gaming history this is in your positive category okay i can't wait to hear the negative one it's a game you can utilize this equipment to relax to maybe exercise your brain in a different way unfortunately about 75 percent of the games are very violent. Oh, oh, they're so violent. Look, I'm in, I'm in a, I'm in a hellscape right now from a video game. This must be from an incredibly violent game called, here, hold on, checking notes, Sonic the Hedgehog. Just saw a commercial the other night. Wow, and so realistic, the soldiers killing each other. Is that maybe, aside here, contributing to our culture of death? Our <laughs> Okay, so Todd, I have a question, a very important question. What do you think contributes more to a culture of death? Video games where people can engage in escapism, uh, where virtual people die and real people don't, or a book that literally says that you only ever get the rewards for your hard work on Earth when you die, and that's when you see the creator and have com cool, fun conversations with him. You only gain immortality after you die. Practically all the good shit happens when you die, and oh, if you didn't like somebody, don't worry, the bad shit happens to them when they die, because they get to go to the bad burning place. Wait, I'm fairly certain by this, by, by, <laughs> by this, we can come to the conclusion that the Bible contributes more so, if not as much, to a, quote, culture of death in, in society. I can remember when my grandpa was on his deathbed, I remember hearing from all of the family members and his friends that came by uh, that he was either going to a better place or it didn't even matter what happened to him now because the apocalypse is coming soon and everything is going to be great when the end of times happens. Wait. Culture of death? Todd, I'm fairly certain that I can identify the culture of death in the United States. Video games are not the culprit here, especially not to the to the extent that you get from from here, from the Bible. Furthermore, is that something that a Christian should be really enjoying? Death is not something that should be celebrated. Death. Well, then maybe we shouldn't read the points in the Bible that say things like, oh, I don't know. Saul has killed his thousands. Oh, but David, that's the guy you need to be rooting for. He's killed his tens of thousands. Or, oh, I don't know. Um, celebrating uh, getting a marriage uh, by harvesting 204 skins so that you can get the, the peak waifu material from your local king. Um, I don't know. What, uh, what other things do we have in there? Oh, yeah, the literal torture porn that is the, the execution of Jesus Christ. Holy shit. It, if there's anything that celebrates violence, the Bible does it in spades, my dude. Death is not something that we play with. Death is not a game. Ask a soldier who struggles with PTSD. Those are traumatic events. Those are image bears. I, I... Yes, and as a civilian, people want the ability to see what stuff is like from that side and one of the ways we do that is through video games or movies or novels and one of the things that you'll find is that there are actual soldiers that will give you perspective on whether or not a given piece of media 
has a good or bad representation of war. For instance, uh, if you've ever seen the movie Saving Private Ryan, there's a lot of veterans I know who, when they see that movie, they actually celebrate that movie, not because it glorifies war, but because it shows a very realistic portrayal of what happens in war. If you, wanted, if you want an example of this in video game form, play something like Spec Ops The Line. That game paints war to be a very gritty, not fun experience, so much so that the game is willing to make itself less fun in order to portray that experience to people. There's a myriad of emotions you can get from video games, and moreover, when it comes to violent games, there's far more than just war shooters. Todd seems to be coming from the perspective uh, when the video game boom happened during the Xbox 360 era, because we had the 360 that gave us online play on a like on a on a wide mass scale over and above what the original Xbox was able to do during its later years, and we had the Nintendo Wii, which brought millions of new gamers in to experience gaming who otherwise wouldn't have been able to. During that boom period, it also helped that the other console on the market, the PS3, was the first affordable Blu-ray player of that time. When you consider all of that, there was a giant boom in new people playing video games during that time, and the most popular game of that era, game series, was Call of Duty, easily. Halo had been the most popular thing of the previous era, and then we got Call of Duty, so war shooters became a massive thing. Todd's information here seems to be based very, very heavily on the prevalence of war shooters, despite the fact that the biggest games in the industry have largely moved away from the war shooter model. Even Call of Duty has become more fantastical in its more recent outings, but we've had more open world type games, more sandboxy games become uh, more prevalent as opposed to these, these soldier war shooters. Moreover, if Todd knew more about video games, maybe he'd be able to explain the different types of violent video games we have. Because we have violent video games that don't celebrate war. We have stuff like Resident Evil, where it's an entire survival horror experience where you may or may not be able to survive based on your item management there. And guess what? Deductive reasoning gets tested during games like that. Resident Evil games, old school ones, are just as much puzzle boxes as they are violent gore fests. They literally sit in the two categories he thinks that games fall into pretty much perfectly. They could be a communist, a Nazi, an Islamic terrorist, still a human being, and I shouldn't be like, oh, got a bunch of them today. And so I would... Nobody does that. <laughs> Nobody goes into a video game and goes, God, I got to kill so many Nazis today. It was so swell. Gosh and golly gee, that was a good experience for me. No, that's not that's not what happens. Usually you celebrate your KDA against other people in, in a competition setting. Unless, of course, you're talking about you beating a story, in which case you're happy you beat a storyline. But, you know. Up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, BA start to get extra lives so this guy can try actual fucking video games. Say, if you want to play games at a discretionary level that does not take away from the rest of your responsibilities. That's up to you, but could I perhaps a little bit more forcefully suggest, would you please consider what you're doing with these violent games? Having fun, enjoying my time, engaging in healthy escapism from the world around me that's honestly gone to absolute shit, uh, and looking after my mental health. That's what I've been doing. I, I know it's pixels. Nevertheless, those are representatives of image bears. Just like if you read a book, like, say, I don't know, the Bible. They're just words on paper, but they're representatives of image bearers. And I don't think war games, violent games, bloody things are games at all. I, I think it is something that is very serious, something that shouldn't be trifled with, and it shouldn't be something that the Christian participates in. So, you heard it here. He's got two categories of games. Fucking Sudoku and Tic-Tac-Toe, and then everything else. And if you want to play Sudoku and Tic-Tac-Toe, Todd is ready and willing for you to do that. But if you want to play literally anything else, he's categorized all of that as violent, destructive nonsense. Never touch any of that. Despite the fact that Todd plays no video games, has no accurate perspective on video games, he's still nonetheless willing to give us his take here as ill-informed as it is. 
Now, I made this case on an earlier video, and I'm going to make it again here. If you are a Christian, your main focus is supposed to be growing with God, right? And I don't think there's a point in time where you can't engage in literally any activity that you find enjoyable and also not grow with God. When I was Christian, for 18 years, I played a plethora of video games. And the video games I played, I played Resident Evil, I played Sonic the Hedgehog, I played many games of the Mario series, I played Banjo-Kazooie, Pokemon, all this stuff. Know what I also was? A very, very enthusiastic Christian, a young Earth creationist. I read my Bible practically every day because I thought that was that's how God was communicating to me. I went to a Christian private school. I went to church two to three times a week. I tried to convert people to become Christian. If I didn't think that somebody was the right flavor of Christian, I tried to convince them that my flavor of Christianity was true because I was concerned that my best friends were going to go to hell. I'd bring them to church when I could. And when I went to church, I would we would sit down and, and try to figure out how we were going to bring more people to the Lord. That was me when I was a Christian. Those are things I did. And I did all of that while playing the evil, violent, horrible, satanic, destructive, everything is bad in the world because these pieces of shit exist, video games. With anything, as long as you are willing to engage in a, in a healthy spread of your time, it is fine. As long as you are not harming another individual. That's my take, anyway. And apparently, Todd does not agree with that. But let's let's finish his video out. See if he's got any other points here. Period. Okay, his point is literally a period. Disagree? By all means, let me know. It wouldn't be the first time that I. No, no, it wouldn't be the first time that I was wrong. A dilemma at wretched.org. Yeah, I'm not going to be sending you a thing. If you stumble across my video where I've given my perspective on this, Todd, then that's on you. You've stumbled across my video. Congratulations. We can have that conversation then. I'm not going to be sending you an email. I've got other better things to do with my time, like playing video games. Because some people also try to work their hobbies, like playing games, into their job. I'm going to be trying to work on more recordings for games for my secondary gaming channel, because I would like to make that a part of my job here on YouTube as much as my conversations about religion, politics, and philosophy, and what have you. Because I think that's a healthy thing to do. Engage in your hobby. If somebody tells you that your hobby is bad, if you're not hurting anybody with your hobby, if your hobby makes you feel better, if your hobby helps your mental health, just engage in your hobby. It doesn't matter what religion you are. Just do the things that make you happy. Even if you're a Christian, you have to come to the conclusion that we only get one life here on Earth. Don't waste it listening to somebody else trying to tell you what to do with your life. That's my take. But what's yours? I'd like to hear it in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, if you have any disagreements with me, let me know down in the comments. If you would like to see more of my content, please hit the subscribe button and the bell notification icon so that you can know when new episodes come out. And on top of all that, most importantly, hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. Hit the dislike if you didn't. And as always, everyone, insert end of video tagline here.